We spent some time working with Echo and Method to rank every spec in the game from beginner friendly to advanced in Mythic Plus. And today, it's all about melee DPS. Now, of course, rankings like this can be a bit subjective. There's a lot of data to tell if something is good or bad, but when it comes to a spec being easy or hard, we need to think of skill floors, which are the minimum requirements needed to perform well. That's totally different than skill ceilings, which represent how far a spec can be pushed to its maximum potential. When thinking about skill floors in Mythic Plus, we mostly need to consider the complexity of a spec's rotation and how much utility it's expected to contribute. And finally, we'll also need to think about passive durability and how well it can handle role-specific tasks. If a spec has an easy rotation, it's not expected to do very much and has some fail-safe defensives, then it's probably more approachable as a beginner. And throughout this video, we're going to give you a few suggestions on what melee fit this description. But if you're the type of player who likes a challenge, we'll let you know which specs really crank up the difficulty level. So with that in mind, stay tuned as we rank every melee DPS from easiest to hardest in Mythic Plus. Many people consider melee to be the harder DPS role, so this means our rankings need to help reflect why that is. To do this, we'll use the same general criteria as everyone else, but for melee, we need to think about uptime and how difficult it is to deal damage while needing to dodge mechanics, since this is what can make the role feel so challenging. When it comes to actually performing your rotation, we're not only thinking about the number of abilities involved, but how unpredictable those abilities can be. Some specs not only have a long priority list of abilities, but can also include procs or resource requirements that make dealing damage less linear and more unpredictable, which is not ideal with the need to carefully dodge mechanics. This is one reason why we have Enhancement Shaman in the hard difficulty tier for melee DPS. Rotationally, Enhancement is fairly complicated, having multiple cooldown-based rotational abilities while needing to funnel AoE damage sources into single-target burst. With a mechanic like Splintered Elements, Enhancement Shamans can gain an astounding 60% haste, which also reduces the cooldown of their rotational abilities, requiring them to think fast in order to deal optimal damage. And without any passive melee attack ranged increases, shamans are forced to dance around mechanics while constantly needing to readjust their complicated damage priority accordingly. Enhance is also loaded with mob control and is expected to take full advantage of it during trash. Having the lowest cooldown interrupt, a knockup effect, and an AoE stop means that enhancement is required to carry a heavy load almost every pull. Layered on top of all this existing complexity is the fact that Enhancement Shamans are lacking in passive survivability. Sure, Astral Shift provides some strong damage reduction, but for the most part, this is the only tool Shamans have to block the true one-shots you will encounter in higher keys. Joining Enhancement on the Advanced Difficulty tier is Unholy Death Knight. Just like Enhance, the Unholy DK rotation is fairly bloated, but this time with two unique forms of maintenance. Number one, being maximizing disease uptime, and number two, being pet management, making sure their pets are able to cleave effectively for maximum damage. Now on top of this, Unholy DK is loaded with multiple disjointed offensive CDs, which can make cooldown management very challenging in the chaotic nature of Mythic Plus. Unholy has multiple cooldown cycles, including abilities that range from 45 second CDs to others that are 1 to 2 minutes, and even longer 3 and 8 minute cooldowns. The learning curve is knowing how to synchronize these cooldown windows with the cadence and pressure points of each run. If all this wasn't enough, Unholy DKs are expected to do a significant amount of mob control. Between Death Grip, Abomination Limb, Blinding Sleet, and multiple interrupts, the niche of Unholy lies in its ability to assist with difficult pulls, grouping together trash, and being highly disruptive when needed. The saving grace for Unholy lies in its strong damage mitigation tools, especially with Will of the Necropolis, which adds passive DR while below 30% HP. This alone doesn't remove the learning curve of Unholy DK, however. 
The need to juggle disjointed offensives with mob control and a maintenance-heavy rotation means Unholy has a lot on its plate and might not be the best pick as a true beginner. Now that we know what an advanced melee DPS looks like, let's look at the opposite end of the spectrum at two specs better designed for beginners. Taking our first spot as a beginner-friendly DPS is Rhett Paladin. After their rework in Season 1, Rhett gained a bunch of quality of life improvements to make them more forgiving in group content. One key example was the addition of Crusading Strikes, which turned a rotational ability into a passive auto attack. Red Paladins are also one of the few melee with extended range on nearly all of their attacks, including melee swings. This helps minimize any DPS downtime when micro movement is needed and can make positioning errors far less punishing. And since Avenging Wrath is a convenient one minute CD and lasts an entire 20 seconds, Red Paladins don't have to make as many calculated decisions when it comes to cooldown cadence. Red Paladins are also very accessibly defensively, where they have a solid mix of passive and active damage mitigation, which together makes it quite difficult to actually die compared to other classes. Sanctified Plates offers additional armor and stamina, adding a passive layer of protection against huge physical damage sources, and for everything else, Red Paladins have a low cooldown wall, absorb, off healing, and of course, a complete damage mitigation bubble in order to navigate mechanics. Does this mean you can be lazy while playing Red Paladin? Of course it doesn't. But with a good mix of passive and active DR, Paladins have multiple paths for staying alive. We're also recommending Frost DKs here as a true beginner spec, which might seem a little jarring since Unholy was considered advanced, and while it's true that Frost and Unholy share similar mob control responsibilities, Frost DKs have a much more streamlined rotation, especially when bursting, where the rotation more or less becomes a cycle between two or three buttons. The autopilot nature of Frost DK damage is what makes it so accessible, and instead of needing to micromanage disjointed cooldowns, Frost DKs can simply crank damage with a simple ability sequence. As we mentioned, the DK class as a whole possesses some pretty solid defensive options. Even having stronger absorb effects and 20% additional stamina on top of passive DR scattered throughout the class tree. And again, this doesn't mean playing a DK means you're going to be instantly immortal, but it does dramatically reduce the chance of getting one shot, which is an important pain point to avoid in Mythic Plus. Now that we've covered both advanced and beginner-friendly melee DPS, let's move on to the intermediate category. Here, we're gonna need to add some gradients. While it's easy to see the extremes of difficulty curves, we're gonna need to make a similar distinction in the middle here, balancing each spec between moderate and hard. Taking our first slots, a true moderately difficult melee DPS are both warrior specs. Before going into their differences though, let's break down what they share in common. When it comes to mob control, warriors have a relatively balanced mix of single target and AOE stops from Stormbolt and Intimidating Shout. Having both of these tools on top of a melee interrupt might seem like warriors are actively involved in CC, but the longer cooldown on Intimidating Shout leaves Stormbolt as the only true reliable mob control option. When it comes to external utility, warriors can also feel a little bit limited here. Even though Rallying Cry can be an immensely powerful tool, its 3-minute CD makes it far less demanding than more efficient utility options. Factoring this into their relatively unimpressive mob control tools, warriors aren't really expected to do much besides damage. Now, defensively, warriors are relatively forgiving. As a high armor class with access to defensive stance, warriors are able to passively deal with physical damage sources while even having a solid mix of self-healing tools which are spread between active abilities and class tree passives. Okay, so when it comes to actually dealing damage, Fury might actually have an easier rotation on paper, but it can feel a bit intense at times, especially during cooldowns, where it requires high uptime to make use of the limited burst windows offered by Recklessness. Fury is notoriously GCD intensive, and to deal sufficient damage needs to spam globals more than most DPS. Seriously though, if you want to speedrun some carpal tunnel on your wrist, then pick up a Fury Warrior in Mythic Plus. Jokes aside here, 
Both Fury and ARMS have a similar difficulty level stemming from their fairly limited utility combined with their powerful passive defensive. Fury might be a bit more intense on the damage side of things, but not enough to bump it dramatically above ARMS in terms of difficulty. Okay, so next up in our moderately difficult melee is Rogue. Yes, all three specs. Now, before you freak out here, yes, there is gradients between each specialization, but first, let's cover what they all share in common. All three Rogue specs possess an abundance of single target mob control through interrupts, multiple stuns, gouge, and blind. And sticking to the theme we've been developing so far, this gives Rogues a distinct difficulty curve, as there's a high expectation that Rogues will actually use their control toolkit during trash. Alongside their bloated control options, Rogues offer some fairly unique tools in terms of group-wide utility. Between Shroud of Concealment, Atrophic Poison, and Tricks of the Trade, Rogues have a few different ways to directly help their group. Now, there is a bit of game knowledge check when using Shroud of Concealment, but this is more relevant to high-level keys compared to entry-level gameplay. So defensively, rogues are a pretty mixed bag here. On one hand, they possess some of the absolute strongest mitigation tools to multiple sources of damage, including some minor active DR against AoE damage with Faint. When used appropriately, rogue cooldowns are incredibly powerful and help offset what might be their biggest weakness which is the fact that outside of CDs, rogues are relatively squishy. With weak passive mitigation and minimal self-healing options, it can feel difficult to stay alive at times. Rotationally, every rogue spec has its own quirks, but none feeling extraordinarily more difficult than the other. Assassination Rogue is pretty maintenance-heavy, relying on keeping up various debuffs across multiple targets while maintaining buffs on themselves. Subtlety, on the other hand, is far more explosive and requires very precise global management to maximize damage during burst windows. And finally, Outlaw has one of the more balanced damage profiles. While being less reliant on major cooldowns, Outlaw has an enormous convenience factor when it comes to dealing AoE damage, as Blade Flurry allows them to effortlessly funnel their single target rotation into multiple mobs. Overall, rogues are a great option for players who are already experienced with mythic dungeons and want to have more control over their group's fate. With multiple CC tools and highly unique utility, rogues are a well-balanced, moderately difficult class. Next up is Feral Druid. Now on the surface, Feral has a lot going on. As hybrid with lots of mob control, there's definitely a lot of potential for this spec, and playing Feral well means using every utility option to its fullest potential. This means monitoring healer mana and using Innervate appropriately, helping the tank group mobs with a Typhoon and being ready to quickly remove any poisons or curses with a quick dispel. There are a lot of responsibilities put in the hands of a melee DPS, which is a notoriously difficult role to begin with. Now, with all of this tech, Feral has a few things that's offsetting its difficulty. For one, as a cat, Feral has nine lives. Well, as long as they press bear form at the right time. Bear form is easily one of the best forms of passive defense in the game. Now, much like defensive stance for warriors, being a bear minimizes the chance at dying dramatically, thanks to the huge boost in stamina and HP. And even if feral druids manage to take a critical hit, an autoproc self-heal provides an additional insurance policy against lethal damage. Now, of course, there is a bit of game knowledge required for using bear form properly and playing around the internal cooldown of well-honed instincts, but overall, ferals can be very forgiving on the defensive end. When it comes to actually dealing damage, Feral is also pretty blessed, at least for AoE pulls where it feels like the king of the jungle. Druids have multiple automatically cleaving abilities and have no issue these days spreading bleeds and even funneling dot damage into ferocious bite procs, which also happen to cleave thanks to rampant ferocity. All of this AoE damage allows Feral Druids to contribute high scoreboard damage with minimal effort. While their single target damage is less impressive, we still think the ability to parse high on massive pulls helps offset the utility requirements of this spec. The last melee in our moderately difficult category is Windwalker Monk, which conceptually is somewhere in between Warrior and Rogue. 
Windwalker monks possess a mix of mob control, including an interrupt, AoE stop, a single target CC, and a highly unique knock effect with Ring of Peace. Now, once again, having immense control options means more responsibilities, which adds a distinct learning curve to this spec. Defensively, monks are very similar to rogues, possessing a wide range of highly unique cooldowns to deal with different damage sources in order to offset the fact that monks are relatively squishy. As a leather-wearing melee spec without any passive stamina increases, monks can take a lot of damage if cooldowns aren't managed properly. And finally, when it comes to dealing damage, Windwalker is pretty interesting, possessing a mastery that rewards you for pressing different abilities. Now, in many ways, this gives the spec the feeling of playing a fighting game character, perfectly sequencing builders and spenders to ensure maximum damage. Some players might find this playstyle very intuitive, but if you're wanting a spec that allows you to button mash, then Monk might not be for you. With our moderately difficult melee covered, let's wrap things up with the remaining two specs, which can have a steeper learning curve. First up is Havoc Demon Hunter. Now, before you get out your pitchforks and protest, yeah, we know at one point DH was considered very easy, but this is more or less a relic of the past, and these days, Demon Hunter isn't exactly free to play. To be consistent with how we've been ranking other melee specs so far, having lots of mob control adds more responsibilities, which in turn means a higher level of difficulty. Demon Hunters happen to have not one, not two, but three different AoE stops on top of already being on interrupt duties with kicks and sometimes even needing to single target CC with fell eruption and imprisonment. This is significantly more mob control than the majority of melee that we've covered so far. Demon Hunters are also not as passively tanky as some of the other melee on this list. This season boasts a significant amount of high physical damage, which easily tears through the leather armor of our Illidari friends. Now, because of this, Demon Hunters have to be especially careful with defensive cooldown management as their high leech doesn't help survive big hits. While Havoc might have an easy time doing cleave damage, there is still a bit of a learning curve in order to take full advantage of every possible stacking modifier. In order to deal damage most efficiently, Demon Hunters need to funnel multiple damage increases into tight burst windows. It's not as simple as spinning to win or pressing one cooldown either. By failing to play around these modifiers, you can lose out on a ton of damage. The final melee on our list is Survival Hunter. Now, this one is also a bit contentious, as by some of our previous definitions, survival would seem easy on paper. With limited group-wide utility options and having some very obscure forms of mob control, it seems like survival hunters don't have as many responsibilities as the other melee that we've mentioned. While that might be true, there is one thing that makes survival exceptionally difficult. Ironically, despite its name, Survival Hunter is just really bad at surviving. The spec lacks passive defense and instead is very reliant on two janky forms of damage reduction and a self-heal. When we made our recent melee tier list, Survival wasn't able to live up to its name and actually scored lowest overall on survivability. In lower level keys, this weakness isn't nearly as punishing, but for the higher keys, hunters are definitely less forgiving and more challenging to play. And with that, we have our final rankings of every melee in the game sorted by difficulty in Mythic Plus. Now, we should add as a disclaimer that these rankings might not be a perfect reflection of every key level. Some classes are more forgiving in lower keys where damage isn't as punishing to misplays. Instead, our rankings represent a guide for the average player looking to play Mythic Plus consistently and grind keystones up to Keystone Master and beyond. Regardless of whether or not you are a beginner or a Keystone grinder, we want to make Mythic Plus a better experience for everyone. And with that in mind, we want to know what topics you would like us to cover next. Drop a comment below and we might feature your idea in an upcoming video. And while you're doing that, be sure to subscribe and turn on all the notifications so you can get access to our latest releases. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.